Dear American taxpayers, you may be surprised to learn that in America, one group enjoys a tax exemption and special privileges from the IRS, privileges that go beyond those afforded to any other taxpayer. Also surprising is the fact that for over 25 years, the IRS fought against this group in the courts, arguing that it did not qualify for any tax exemption due to the commercial character of much of the group's operations and its virtually incomprehensible financial procedures. In 1991, an unusual meeting was held between the leader of the group and the IRS commissioner. A complete reversal of the IRS position came into effect in October 1993. A secret deal now provides this group with rights that exceed those of the average citizen. This group and its associated corporations are known by various names, including Church of Scientology International, Church of Spiritual Technology, and Religious Technology Center. Front groups include Applied Scholastics, Narconon, Criminon, and the Citizens Commission on Human Rights. Scientologists are able to claim tax deductions of a nature that is prohibited from members of any other group. According to the New York Times, the exemption followed a series of unusual internal IRS actions that came after an extraordinary campaign orchestrated by Scientology against the agency and people who work there. Scientology's lawyers hired private investigators to dig into the private lives of IRS officials and to conduct surveillance operations to uncover potential vulnerabilities, according to interviews and documents. One investigator said he had taken documents from an IRS conference and sent them to church officials and created a phony news bureau in Washington to gather information on church critics. The church also financed an organization of IRS whistleblowers that attacked the agency publicly. The decision to negotiate with the church came after Fred T. Goldberg Jr., the commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service at the time, at an unusual meeting with Miscavige in 1991. Scientology's own version of what occurred offers a remarkable account of how the church leader walked into IRS headquarters without an appointment and got in to see Goldberg, the nation's top tax official. Miscavige offered to call a halt to Scientology's suits against the IRS in exchange for tax exemptions. After that meeting, Goldberg created a special committee to negotiate a settlement with Scientology outside normal agency procedures. IRS tax analysts were ordered to ignore the substantive issues in reviewing the decision, according to IRS memorandums and court files. The IRS refused to disclose any terms of the agreement, including whether the church was required to pay back taxes. The position is in stark contrast to the agency's handling of some other church organizations. The U.S. Constitution upholds the principle of the separation of church and state. The Establishment Clause of the First Amendment ensures government policy remains neutral towards religious groups. According to the Constitution, one religious group should not receive special treatment by the U.S. government. On February 4, 2008, before three judges of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, Jeffrey Zuckerman represented Michael and Marla Sklar, who were refused tax deductions for the religious component of their children's education. Their deduction was refused because they are not Scientologists. Judge Kim Wardlaw summarized the situation. The view of the IRS is that it can unco unconstitutionally violate the Constitution by establishing religion, by treating one religion um, more favorably than other religions um, in terms of what it allows as deductions, and there can never be any judicial review of that. Your Honor, that is not at all what I said. It is, the, it is the IRS's well, that's view. The bottom line. It's the IRS's view that it can settle, it can resolve an issue by giving, conceding something to one, one person, one group, in exchange for a payment and resolution of litigation. It is not the general, it's not a general policy of favoring one group. And I don't think that the IRS is acting un in unconstitutionally in settling. I know you're not going to say that that's the agreement, but it's written right into it. Well, 
to the extent that we're looking at what the Wall Street Journal agreement says, there was a payment made, though, and litigation was completed. So it's not as simple as you're saying now that it's okay as long as the IRS gets some money. Well, I think the idea is for the IRS generally and with each taxpayer is to try to enforce the tax laws and get the best results. But there are situations when in litigation it makes sense to reach a settlement. And when a settlement is reached that for some reason gives somebody who happens to be a member of a particular religious group or a particular minority and they get that settlement, that doesn't violate the Establishment Clause. No, it does. I mean, this does intrude into the Establishment Clause. The whole point is government neutrality toward religion, and that's exactly what the IRS is not doing here. The affidavit of Lawrence H. Brennan, filed on May 6, 2008, reveals that Scientology corporations deliberately worked to create the appearance of a religious group in order to gain a tax exemption and hide its assets from outsiders. Religious cloaking was intentionally used to help organize Scientology make money and to avoid compliance with a myriad of laws that would otherwise apply if it was not so considered. The use of scholars to say Scientology was a religion or organized Scientology was a religious organization was carefully planned and executed to forward the cover of the religious cloaking. The entire corporate reorganization of 1981 on was to hide assets from litigants and governments and to protect those secretly running organized Scientology from legal liability. The true danger lurking behind those corporate veils and hidden behind religious cloaking is organized Scientology's intention to control the legal systems and educational systems of the world, to rid the world of its enemies, and apply its brutal ethics policies to everyone. That is what is in store for the world should the policies of organized Scientology be applied throughout the world. It has long been the intention of organized Scientology to do the above, as it uses its front groups like Barkanon, Applied Scholastics, The Way to Happiness Foundation, etc., to get inroads into society for organized Scientology. If you feel that Scientology's secret deal with the IRS is an injustice to American taxpayers, please write to your congressman and inform others about this unacceptable situation.